Welcome back to part two of the silver chloride conversion with lye and sugar. And what I'm going to do is reach in here and get a, uh, I got a pH test strip. Show you the pH of this rinse water so far. And you can see it's way up there, probably close to uh, max pH. So what we need to do is continue to rinse this until we get this pH closer to neutral. Using the silver chloride method is an advantage over the silver cell in that you can get pure silver from the dissolved silver and nitric acid in just a matter of a couple of days. Whereas with the silver cell, it takes several weeks. The downside of using the silver chloride conversion method is that it creates a lot of liquid waste. I've rinsed the silver multiple times. I'm gonna get down in here with a little bit of pH test drip. Test some of our rinse water and see where we're at with this. And as you can see by that color, we're still like between eight and nine, maybe. See that? So we still got some more rinsing to do. In this particular conversion, I didn't pay close attention to getting all the impurities filtered out of those uh, silver solutions before we converted it to silver chloride. So there's probably gonna be a little bit of other metals in there, maybe some gold, maybe a little bit of platinum group metals, but that doesn't matter because we're not going for high purity here. We're just gonna run this silver through the silver cell. I'm gonna test the water again with one of these cheap test strips. I think we're there. I think we finally hit neutral. So now we're ready to put this in a pan and dry it off. Here you can see we've got about five gallons of lye and sugar water. That's how much it took to get all of the, uh, all of the uh, caustic liquid off of here. I'm gonna try adding this to a, uh, a melt dish, not a melt dish, a uh, drying dish here carefully without spattering it and spilling it everywhere it's hot my gloves are thin it's gonna shake it out of there maybe cement silver likes to stick and hang on make things difficult when we do a transfer like this all right I think what I've got to do here now is just try to get some of that liquid out of there so that we don't have to sit here and let it evaporate all day so the only thing I can think of to do is just start pulling it out with a dropper and adding it to my waist Got all the uh, water out of there. I've got a handful of glass rods. Whenever I break a glass rod, I save it. And I put them down in these, uh, in the bowl so that it'll keep the silver from making direct contact with the heat that's underneath here. Pull this up, turn it on low heat. 
Now what we'll do is we'll put some water in here. Add a little bit more water to our uh, water bath. And this is so that the silver doesn't spatter. And uh, bubble out of the container. I'm gonna dry this off slowly in a water bath. I've got our silver dried off and uh, what we're going to do is take it over here to our melt table and I've got my uh, ramp set up with my tank we're going to melt this up some shot Let's go ahead and pour it on our board here. Make some shot. Like I said, this is gonna be high purity silver. Silver.
blasted this in there now. Here I'm using a technique to keep from blowing that silver powder out of the melt dish. I've got the oxyacetylene flame turned way down low and I've got it held about an, a foot and a half above the dish. And I go around the edges and I just slowly bring the torch head down as the silver begins to melt and form a crust. And that way I don't blow silver powder out of the crucible all over my melt table. Now that I've got a crust of uh, melted silver to form over the powder, I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm adjusting the flame. I'm increasing the gas and oxygen flow to increase the heat coming from the flame to uh, get the silver powder to melt completely. Silver looks a lot different than the other impure silver shot that we pour. This is nice and bright and shiny like silver should be. Right, let's go ahead and pour our silver in here. Take a look and see what we got. Here's the silver. It does look like it's got a little bit of copper in it still. I'm gonna pour this excess water off and then we'll uh, dry it off. And see if we can get us a yield on this. I've got the silver all dried off now. I'm going to take this off the heat and let it cool off. Here's our silver. It's been allowed to cool completely. I'm going to get a weight on this stuff. See what we got in here. 500 grams of silver. It's a lot better looking than our other impure silver that's because this is higher purity in in this right container over here to my right it does still have just a little bit of copper in it that you can see but we've got a half a kilo of silver that we can run through the silver cell now from that silver chloride that i'd been saving up all right this will conclude the video Thank you for watching.